All right, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Jewels. We're taking a look at the uh, Golgari Sacrifice subscriber deck today. Uh, since the last episode, I have made a few changes. So we'll take a look at those before we get into the match, shall we? Um, not a great deal's changed. Essentially, what we've done is we've implemented a little Vile, Vile Redeemer and Nantukos combo. So Vile Redeemer is a 3-3... For three with flash and it says when you cast it you may pay a colorless mana if you do you get to put a 1-1 colorless Eldrazi Scion creature onto the battlefield for each non-token creature that died under your control this turn so essentially what we want to do is to finish off making an unblockable Nantuka Husk sack our entire board then pay the four mana get all the creatures we've sacrificed Back as 1 1 colorless Eldrazi and then sacrifice them again to the Nantu Kosk. Hopefully, with that plan in mind, we're going to be able to do a lethal amount of damage in, the, in one turn. So, essentially, not a great deal's changed other than changing a few numbers around. So, we've got two Sanitarium Skeletons, three Blister Pods, two Vampiric Rites, four Blo Bone Splinters. Carrier Thralls is a new, um, a new card we've added. So it's a 2-1 for 2. When it dies, you get to put a Colourless Eldrazi. It's same as Blister Pod, essentially, just with one extra power. Uh, we've got our Rot Shamblers, our Alters Reaps, Card Draw, Macabre Waltz. We've got for um, Recursion. We've added in Liliana because she flips very easy in this deck. And when another non-token creature dies, we get a Zombie, which is good. But we also get the Planeswalker version. Which allows us to discard for plus two. Um, if we aim for the ultimate, if we get the ultimate, we've just won. Because all of our deck is around sacrifice. And her ultimate says whenever a creature dies, return it to the battlefield on the end step. Which could also be our opponent's creatures as well. The main reason I think she's good in this though is for her minus X ability. Because we can return target non-X, non-legendary creature with converted mana cost X from your graveyard. We've got a lot of twos and ones that we want to bring back so for just minus one we've got two sack outlets and for minus two we've got two sack outlets here you can get a rot shambler out if we've got like an antuco husk and we can start sacrificing stuff if we've ultimated her as well it's just game over there's no way our opponent can come through because we've got so many chump blockers that are so cheap to get back that i, I think if we ultimate liliana it's just game over nantuko uh, husk and Val Redeemer, as I mentioned. We've gone to three pulses, because I think this uh, deck can do really well against aggro if you're pulsing back loads of creatures, because of the six life gain that you get uh, every single time you do it. Also allows you to get land cards back. So we've actually messed with the mana base a little bit, and we've got a Hissing Quagmire, which we can get back with pulse. And we've also got Warp Landscapes, which are like expo uh, expensive Evolving Wilds, uh, with the ability to use themselves as colourless mana. Which is very important with the Val Redeemer as well. We want to make sure that when we come to winning, we have some sort of colourless source. Uh, we've got our Nyssa, same as uh, last time, from Beyonds for two, and our Baloth Nulls. So as I mentioned, I've messed with the mana base just a little bit. I've actually... Uh, it seemed as though, at the very beginning of the game, it kind of seems as though we want Blackmore, but... I think a balance is in order in this case. So we've got eight swamps and eight forests. One hissing quagmire we can make into a death touch creature to threaten big creatures for our opponent. Uh, one Westvale Abbey. I went down that so that we could go up some more warp landscapes. I might consider changing that up a little bit. But I've been getting mana screwed. And when I say mana screwed, I mean only getting swamps for some strange reason, despite the entire deck being perfectly uh, even on mana base. So the warp landscapes are in there for the colours mana, but also to make sure that we have the right coloured mana when it comes to it. We've got the two woodland cemeteries, as is pretty much tradition. As is tradition when you're doing a green-black deck. And then we've got the rogue's passage that we can use to push through our Nantukos for the lethal amount of damage that we need to do. Or even a rock shambler that might have just gotten really big. But that's the deck anyway, guys. So I'll see you in the matches. See you in a bit. And we're in, and we're on the play. We have nice amount of mana, and we have plenty to do, and a sack outlet. So this is the nut drawer, as far as I'm concerned. So we'll lead off with a sanitarium skeleton. Next turn, I'm not sure. Our opponent is rank 13, Mr. Freeze 35. 
Our opponent's missed his... No, no. I was going to say our opponent missed his land drop. Then I just realised it was going through our phases. thought this was going to be an exciting match. So we're on red-black. Is it vampires? Is it Eldrazi? I'm not quite sure. So we'll lead off with a forest. And we might as well attack. Um... Not sure whether to go for the Carrier Thrall or the Rot Shambler. I'm leading towards Carrier Thrall because it's got more power. And if we could push through as much damage in the early game as possible, then all the better. And then later on, um, on his next turn, if he does put up a blocker, we can Rot Shambler. And we can, if we want to anyway, we can suicide our creatures into his defences. So it's a Snapping Gnarlid, so it's actually going to be a Landfall deck. Interesting. Okay. Well, in that case, let us forest, and then we're going to Rot Shambler. And we'll throw our Carrier Thrall in his face. If he blocks it, then our Rot Shambler gets bigger, and we get Scion back for a little bit of ramp, for maybe getting to the Baloth quicker. He's not going to block. Okay. Well, there's no reason why we shouldn't block with the Sanitarium Skeleton, because it does get a counter on our Rot Shambler. Which means we can swing back a lot harder on his turn, on our turn next. So what's our opponent going to do? Probably burn out our Rock Shambler, I'm going to imagine. So he gets plus one, plus one. That's his land drop for the turn, although... Yeah, there we go. Exquisite Firecraft, probably going Rock Shambler. Yep. As was expected. Well, we're just going to take this three then, because we're not going to profit from chump blocking. And that's the only reason we block at this early stage in the game. Because I doubt preserving our life total is a big deal to us at the moment. Okay, so we got another forest. So we'll lead off with a rock shambler. And then, same plan again. I think we're going to attack with the carrier thrall. We could even just attack with a sanitarium skeleton and sacrifice the thrall so that we have a scion chump blocker and we gain one life and draw a card that sounds like a good idea because we're out of cards now which is a problem and we can't cast the stuff that we do have and if we sacrifice the thrall and get a land we can get the baloth into play which will get us a rot shambler and the thrall back another firecraft okay well we're going to sacrifice the Rock Shambler then. She's unfortunate, but that's both of his uncounterable burn spells. Which I'm more than happy to lose. And our opponent is thinking, should I attack? He very much should. Because we have no threats. I'm going to be swinging in for three though, so this is a race we're going to win. At the rate we're going anyway. Pulse is nice. Okay, so we're going to go forest. And then we're going to do that. We should have probably pulsed, got the Rot Shambler, played the Rot Shambler. Just in case he had a uh, fiery impulse or something like that. But it's just going to skip through our phases anyway. So there's nothing much we can do about it. So we're going to gain six life. We've just got such a swing in terms of life and Mina and Den gets him an extra land okay. oh 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 let's get ourselves our scion token that's going to allow us to put the bale off out and get back to carrier thrills and gets us a pulse which is lovely Baloth is probably the right play. Gets us back two Carrier Thralls. That's just... Oh no, a Carrier Thrall and a Rock Shambler, sorry. Which has refilled our hand of creatures. We can put the From Beyonds down later. And we'll be able to um, get free sacks from the Scions that we'll be generating. So our Rock Shambler should, in theory, get out of control real fast for our opponent. Okay. Kindy Slide Runner. Same as this guy, but with Trample instead. 
So yeah, it's, it's landfall. I'm just wondering what the black's in here for. I've not actually come across landfall decks that much. So I'm not really sure. He's not prepared to swing into us then, so that's good. Right, so what we want to do, I think, is just get out a lot of creatures. If we Rot Shambler, Rot Shambler, Westvale Abbey, we can hold up Vampiric Rites. Or do we want to carry a Thrill? No, we'll get the Rot Shambler out for value. So we'll get two 1 1 counters when we sack the skeleton to the Vampiric Rites. So I think that's what we're going to do. Build up our creatures, because he's likely going to kill our creatures with burn. So if you can get them out of that range. All's well and good. I imagine, though, he's got a fair few X-Burn spells, though, that we have to worry about. Does he feel like he can get through our Baloth and our Sanitarium Skeleton? Because we can neglect... Nullify, should I say. Chandra's Ignition. That sucks. Okay. Well, we're going to sacrifice... The Rot Shambler. It doesn't matter which one, just as long as we don't sacrifice the bail off. Macabre Waltz is going to get us back our creatures again. And in fact, I may even just block with the bail off. If he swings in with Mina and Den, that's a trade I can get behind. Because we can Macabre Waltz back the bail off. And the Baloth can get us more creatures at that point. So that's just super value for us. Right, so. Woodland Cemetery. Can we cast Baloth on this turn? Three, four, five. It's six to cast the Baloth. But we can get back other creatures. Like the Rot Shambler. And then we're going to have to discard something. Um, let's see. Probably the carrier thrill. Let's take a turn off from casting creatures to get the from beyond out. Should have maybe taken the skeleton just so I could discard the skeleton, but I don't think it makes a difference either way in terms of value off the waltz. Unless our opponent does something drastic here, I, I can't see how he can get through because he's just traded off one of his biggest landfall uh, creatures because I think he called our bluff assuming we we cared more about our Baloth than he did. So let's get a Baloth out. Grab a Thrall and a Rot Shambler since we can get the Skeleton back at any point. And then we'll play the Shambler. Sadly, we don't get the benefit from the sack, the sack cost, but we're going to be getting a Scion each turn now, so this Rot Shambler is just going to get massive. And we have a very, very, very good blocker in the form of the Baloth, which, yet again, I'm happy to trade because we've got the Pulse and it'll gain us 6 life if he kills it, and a great target for the Pulse. So our opponent is worrying that he is not going to win, I imagine. Not sure. With a landfall deck, it's usually highly aggressive. And with our recursion, I'm pretty sure he's just run out of steam. Because if we didn't have the recursion that we do now, we'd be empty-handed, essentially. Yeah. And that's what he'd hope that we were. So it seems as though he's got nothing to get through the bail off. And therefore, he's just suiciding his creatures for no value. Right, so Rot Shambler. We're going to carry a thrall. And then we'll sack our Scion for the Altar's Reap. Hopefully, get a swamp, which will allow us to play the other carrier thrall for most value. And we whiffed on that just a bit. Okay. Well, I'm just going to swing in with the Baloth. If he 
swings at us. We've got a Carithril to block and it makes our Shamblers a lot bigger. Okay. He's just going to trade off one of his creatures. It's fine by me. So we've got essentially everything we need now. We've got plenty of creatures to sacrifice. Creatures that will get them back. Uh, life gain. We've got a permanent sack outlet here. We've got uh, Scion generation from the From Beyond. This is the board state that we want to see in the world. We could even make Ormondol right now, but it wouldn't win, so I'm not going to do it just yet. So let's carry a thrill. We do only have one black mana, though. That is the downside. And, in fact, let's Alter's Reap again. Sacrificing the Scion token. Pump our creatures back up. Hopefully get a black mana. No black mana. It's 24 lands in this deck. And constantly getting screwed on mana. So we're just going to swing in. See if he wants to double block one of our shamblers. He does not. Okay, well that's even better for us really. End step, we can pulse. Eh, not really worth pulsing anything really. Unless we lose our carrier thrall for some reason. But yeah, that's just going to be the game it seems. Pure value. And the Nantuka husk. Another sack, per sack outlet. Which would have been lovely a lot earlier, but what can you do? Right, well, let's just swing for lethal, shall we? You know what? Just for the sake of it, I'm going to get some mana. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Victory! Right, guys, I'll see you in the next game. Okay, we're in, and we're on the plate. This is a pretty good hand. We've got the right amount of mana. Uh, I would have preferred it being a swamp over a forest, but we've got plays to do. We've got recursion. Seems good to me. So we'll go with a swamp. Our opponent is rank 23, Shinsei. Okay, so what's our opponent playing? Blue. Blue, blue, blue. It's not too bad against us, I wouldn't say. If he's going to counter our creatures, they're just going to go into the graveyard where we have full access to them anyway. So we'll go to Carrier Thrill. It's more damage on the board, and if he presents a blocker that won't, uh, the Carrier Thrill can't get past, then we play a Rock Shambler and we get value out of it killing itself. So it's going to be Prowess. Okay. Stormy Prowess, Creature Luffs. Kind of deal. If you uh, understood what I said in that madness, congratulations, because I didn't. Right, Forest, Rock Shambler. So, what we want to do is swing in with Carrier Thrall, present a trade. Happy to present it. We're going to hold on to the Bone Splinters for the. Um, ah, oh, what's it called? Cunning Spark Mage? I can't remember. The blue-red flying prowess creature. That's the most threatening one that he's got in his deck. Avacyn's Judgment. Is that one damage to each creature? Yes, it is. Okay. Fine with me. What we can do is we can Macabre Waltz both of them back. I'm just going to take this three. can do far worse. And I'd prefer to block the far worse ones. Swamp is nice. It means we've got the double black for anything we need to cast in the future. Uh, let's see. We can rot shambler. Just thinking, if we hit actually, if we hit a land next turn, we can bail off. So we don't want to kill the Scion, otherwise we can't. So we'll just make it look like we want to do this. If he targets our Scion to kill it or something like that, we can sack it and gain benefits from it. But we're going to have to take a hit this turn, it seems. 
because that land will get us both of these back. Grip of the Royal. Would have been better for you to tap down the Scion. Because I'd imagine you'd much rather block that. Although, then again, I could set the Scion and trade with him, but... Eh. Whatevs. I need a land. I need a land. That is not a land. That's life gain, though, which is very valuable. With our opponent's board state. Um, let us... Our opponent's only going to beat us with burn, most likely. But I imagine he's got a little bit of bounce in there. So we don't want to rely too much on our Rot Shambler's counters. I think I'm just going to hold up the Pulse. To gain the 6 life. Because hopefully he wants to overextend and finish us off. And then we'll... We'll life gain our way out of the danger zone. He hasn't played any other creatures though, so I imagine he's going for a low creature count kind of build. And the downside of decks like that, like boggles and stuff like that, is if you get rid of their creatures, then you end up um, screwing them a little bit. Okay, so he was only willing to trade then. We're just going to pulse, I think. Pulse and get back a carrier thrall. Thrall. Land, land. Pulse. Well, we'll put the thrall out there. That's going to be what blocks this guy again. We don't want to waltz because we're just going to discard the cards that we want. We want some sort of land later on that we don't want to discard to it. Or even a sanitarium skeleton's the optimal thing to discard to the waltz since we can pull it back later on. So, was our opponent? He's got to have some pump in there. I mean, he attacked us last turn into a scion and he definitely did not want to trade with a scion. So we got to bear that in mind. Could always play the fumarol, and then it would force me to block, and he'd just make keep it as a one four. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Fortunately, I've just got a thrall that I can throw in the way, and that'll actually mean that we can bail off next turn. So he's doing us a favour without knowing he is. So there's our 6 mana, and we get an extra counter. And we get a land anyway. Alright, fantastic. Right, well, bail off. We get 2 counters on our Rot Shambler. Which makes him nice and big. We're going to swing in with the Rot Shambler as well. Empty our graveyard of creatures. Go down to value town. And swing in for four. Now we have a decent blocker. What's he got for us? For one mana. The only bounce spell for one blue is sorcery speed, is it not? That would be annoying. It wouldn't really hurt us, though. He must have had something of the kind. And it's suitable in the deck as well, since one mana is a prowess trigger. And he could potentially have all four in his hand for four prowess triggers, which would be a lot. Lightning Axe is what he had. Okay. Please, please target the Baloth. Oh, beauty. Beauty. Oh, no. Although, he's going to have Welcome to the Fold. Which allows him to take our Rot Shambler. Hmm. Well, we can thrall and kill our own Rot Shambler. And then with that... Well, we can thrall Rot Shambler, then kill our own Rot Shambler. And then pulse later on to get back the bail off to get back all our creatures again. Yeah, we can afford to do this. So we'll do that. We will... Bone Splinters, 
The Rot Shambler. Yes. And kill that. Get a counter on our own Rot Shambler. Kill our old one. It's you control, not you own, isn't it? Yeah. So we weren't going to get a counter from killing our own Rot Shambler. We're in a little bit of a precarious situation now. Has he got something to discard? I'd imagine so. No, it's just a land. Okay. So he's not incorporating too many madness spells into this. Do I trade with this? We've got three, six, seven mana. It's going to cost six, nine mana to do the entire pulse bail off trick. Um, I'm a little afraid of my life total at the moment, so I'm going to make this trade. Ah, he's going to give it trample. Okay. So we're taking four. Once he's out of steam, though, we should be all right. We have a pulse as well to gain more life. File Redeemer's not too great in this current situation. Unfortunately. So we're going to pulse on his end step. We're going to hopefully... Encourage him to try kill us this turn. And then we'll pulse out of his range. Because if he has another rush of adrenaline, which is a common and one mana. So I'm very confident that he's probably got one. Majoring bully. He's discarding creatures, is he? And a forgotten creation. Okay. Well, I'm not going to block. And if he just wants to do three damage, that's fine. And he ends his turn, so we go back and get our bail off. Gain six life. And we're going to be able to refill our hand again. So, bail off. Get back a rock shambler and a carrier thrall. This forgotten creation's a bit annoying as well. Lightning Axe, 5 damage to our Bailoth. Okay, well we've got Macabre Waltz to go grab it again. If we hit a land, we can do both on our turn. Otherwise, we've got Chump Blockers. We might be dead, though. Oh no, we're not. There's 4 damage. Kills that. 5, 6, 7, oh, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah, he could have exactsies. Depends on what that card is. Fiery Temper. Is that exact? I think that's exact. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Not quite, but very close. I know. Yeah. So we're a burn spell away from death. Come on, Nantukohusk. We need three creatures out. If we macabre waltz, we've got five mana left. Which means we can't play the bail off. So I think we thrall, shambler, husk. And we could potentially go for the win with the Val Redeemer. I'm not entirely sure. We're forced to block, though. That's the problem. But there is a way we can kill both. And his land as well. Nah. Yeah, this is a problem. He's got nothing. Okay. That is very nice. Right. We've got to do this right. 
and what is right. If we sacrifice the Nantuko Husk to the Carrier Thrall, we get an extra mana. Extra mana means we pay two for the Macabre Waltz. We've got six mana to bail off. And we have a 4-4. Four, four. Hmm. I suppose we're going to have to s discard the Altar's Reap because Vile Redeemer is our win condition. Yeah, I don't like this play. But I don't like our current board situation either. So we do that. We Macabre Waltz the Bailoff and the Thrall for extra value. Discard the Altar's Reap. Play the Bailoff. We get a counter on the Rot Shambler. We get our Rot Shambler back. It's three blockers for our opponent. We're not going to attack because he's got no reason to block. If he has a burn spell to kill one of our creatures, we've lost. He's got two cards in hand. Is one of them capable of winning? No. He's not. Can we win this turn? So we make Rogue's Passage on the Nantuka Husk makes it unblockable. We thrall, we've got two, three, four triggers. That's eight damage. That's not enough. Not enough at all. So I think what we want to do is just widen our board a little bit more and get a Nissa out and start. Putting out sacrifice counters for the Vile Redeemer. Sack fodder is exactly what we need. As well as a widened board like this. This is this is a winning board now. So if we can survive the turn, we've won. Although, hmm. No, we can use a Scion to get the colourless on the Vile Redeemer. I was just worried we didn't have enough. Oh, fiery temper. Uh, that's going to be it. Uh, we had the game. It was in our hands. Uh, well, what can you do? All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, then be sure to leave a like. If you've loved the episode, then be sure to subscribe. But if you're not quite sure, stay for the end card. See the rest of the content I've got to offer. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye.